twist bits briefly, and then coarsener bits, and uh, also bone cutters for the sake of sharpening. Great. Um, bone cutters, I don't know if you guys have if you looked at this before you've tried to cut bungs, but if you're trying to cut bungs with a dull bung cutter, it's going to chowder up the outside edges of the bung, specifically the two points where you have end grain on the bung, right? Yep. And it makes a really, really shitty bung, and uh, it also makes them smaller in diameter because it's like mm -hmm. wearing away a lot of material because it's just come catching up on them. So when you're looking at bung cutters, um, if the <laughs> the other common problem is when people undo them from a drill press. If you are not holding on to like the bung cutter in your hand like this and to the drill chuck that you're holding and unkeying, then the bung cutter, when it finally comes undone, oh, yeah. will drop um, onto the piece of blade steel that is the bed of the drill press. Um, and, uh, and then you'll wind up folding over the corners because you just dropped all four corners nicely on a piece of steel and it's like this. So, um, the thing to be cognizant of is burrs on the inside of the cutters on your bung cutters and look for that before you grab a bung cutter to cut bungs with. So that one's, that one's nicely smoked and if you run your fingernail up the inside, you know, between the burr on either side you're going to be losing like, gosh, almost a 30 second maybe more off of that bung. Um, and, uh, and when you have small bungs, you know, they're not going to go into the holes well, especially if you're using wood glue, which is my personal preference because it comes out easy. Um, then, uh, then it's going to be sloppy in there and they're going to fall out, you know. They're, you have to let the glue dry before you can clip them, all sorts of other crap. Um, you were mentioning a burr. You don't want the burr in there? You don't you want do the burr. You do not want to burn that. I mean, if you think of the burr as on the inside. And how, how did it create a burr? When you're if they get, or they drop they get dropped okay. um, or like run into the steel bed of a okay. press. But just or, using them in wood is not going to. I mean, it can. It's the same way that the edge of your, your plane blade can kind of fold over. <coughs> you know, you've got this like very crisp edge and and you're forcing it down into the wood and that the easiest point for it to fold is up in yeah, the end. Right, right. Yeah. So you can develop a little bit of a burr. And do you also anywhere. when you're sharpening it create a burr that you need to take off the way you do on a chisel? Um yes. Um so when I'm sharpening these uh, I use Sharpies a lot when I'm sharpening drill bits and edges um, because it's like you can... Why do they call them Sharpies? That's why they call them Sharpies. Why they call them Sharpies, man. <laughs> um, they're also known as inedible markers. <laughs> 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 that was definitely... That is a favorite Danielism. <laughs> yeah. So don't try and eat them. They don't taste good. They will get you drunk, but it's not worth it. Yeah. And they're sweet. That will make you way yeah, smarter. Right. But if you sharpie the the edges, you're gonna be able to see what you're removing in terms of material. When you think about a bung cutter, you know, the ed this bottom point right here is really the cutting edge. You have this side that's kind of cutting the long grain, and then this uh, sharpness of point right here that's kind of like cutting across the grain, kind of like uh, the knickers on a rabbit plane or the teeth on a crosscut saw, you know, so you've got that kind of like combination of two cutting edges that's really going to be uh, making that cut happen well. Um, so when you're sharpening these, you want to be sharpening this face and this face. One thing that is important to be cognizant of, I'm sure you guys have all picked up a bone cutter, chucked it into a drill press, gone to run it down on a piece that you haven't necessarily clamped down and because you don't want to have, and it like skitters and you're like, what the friggin heck? And, um, but when you have one tooth of a bung cutter that's lower than the other, and then the other three, right? 
it's going to make that piece want to wander because uh, you have just one tooth that's spinning around in a circle and it's going to make that like weird swirly cut. So the important thing when you are sharpening these um, is to keep them consistent. And sometimes to double check if I'm like cutting like really nice bungs for finish work and I want like stuff to be super crisp, right? And it's all gonna be varnished or whatever. I'll take the bung cutter after I'm done and I'll actually chuck it into the drill press and I'll take a, the piece of scrap wood that's on the base of the drill press off and I'll run it down just right up to the edge of the iron of the bed. And you can see if one tooth is longer because right, that bed is perpendicular to the drill press so you're like basically just like not with the drill press running just bringing the drill bit down <laughs> to the bed to see if it's true you know so you can double check to see if that fit is true um, but, and if it's not you can the point here and what other point did you sharpen this edge here and this face here okay Right. The three that uh, are the leading parts. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then if they have that burr on the inside, right. um, I'll deal with that by taking like either a radius file if it's a large enough radius, or um, my preference actually is to take small diameter chainsaw files and snap the tangs off the back sides because it's so that you know it's filed, so you can just snap them. So you can snap the tang off the back side. And then you can hold the file like this and draw it up, mm. you know, and it's, you're not trying to like push the file down right. into it, but you're using the entire inside surface as a guide for that file. Yep. So you're not, you're not filing it like at an angle, right? Because yep. then you're going to be changing that cutting face and the diameter of the bung and you don't want to be doing that. You know, you are changing the diameter of the bung ever so slightly, but you know, you can take a chainsaw file, snap the tang off, and use this as kind of a guide to keep that straight up and down and just, just like brushing it and bringing that burr off is all you need to do. How um, do you discern whether it's the bung cutter that's out or the, the <coughs> table that's out of square? Yeah. Um, you mean when you lower it down with it not going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can just take a combination square and without a drill bit in the drill, bring it down uh, and yeah. stick it right up against the chuck mm -hmm. and see if it's square or not. Mm -hmm. If it's square, it should be square to the chuck because all that stuff is all concentric on the chuck and everything mm -hmm. else. So you should be able to check that. Mm -hmm. And then if the table's out of square, then you're never gonna screw up a bung cutter. <laughs> Like this thing just keeps, I keep spinning it and it's crooked every time. God damn it. Um, so in terms of like sharpening these, you know, having a decent set of um, uh, like a needle file set is really nice for sharpening. Um, you know, having these small round files like the sort of file for taking that burr off the inside. You know, as I was saying, you have the handle on this side, and when you're here with a needle file, all the files are being pushed. You're having to push this down you don't really have a guide mm. but that's why i like that chainsaw file thing um but you can totally the chainsaw do it. file is a flat uh, just a file. smaller diameter or a slightly larger diameter round file okay. could you break the end off of that one you could but it's a job set. set and i don't really want to um, this is more worthwhile with the handle on it to me mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm sharpening these, you know, I've sharpened the edges. Most of the time I'll, I'll just clamp them in a bench vise as I'm working. Um, but with a small flat file, I like to clamp them on an angle. So like my, my uh, filing is like pretty close to um, horizontal mm -hmm. so that my hands can rest on here and my elbows can lock against my side and like the body motion is like very you know, I'm not trying to be like keeping this exactly something, you know, like the body motion is just a lot more natural. So then you're just like looking at what you're taking off in terms of the Sharpie marks and trying to get that consistent. And 
having some nice light is also really nice. But you know, I'm just taking it off and I'm gonna do the same amount of strokes on every single face of the bung cutter. And it doesn't take a hell of a lot. And the more you're taking off, the more likely it is that you're taking it out of true. Yes, I, that was a, a question I was about to ask was how much you have to worry about the flex in the file. Uh, you do. It's not like, it's not a perfect world. Uh, but you can use, you know, the difference with the file sometimes is that you do need to be cognizant of them. It's like the, the density of the teeth. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's going to dictate, like, the grit yeah. you're cutting with. The, like a mill bastard file is going to be like, you know, 80 grit mm -hmm. versus sharpening with, you know, 120 or 320 sort of okay. sort of difference. You know, it's, it does it's not a direct translation, yeah. but it is that sort of difference when you're using different files. And again, it's the same thing as like chisels or hand planes or anything like that. You know, you can sharpen a hand plane on a bandsaw or on a <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> there goes that one. Um, uh, but like you know, you can sharpen a blade on a on a belt sander, yeah. and it'll be sharp and great. It'll be sharp for you know about the amount of time that you spent to sharpen, sharpen it. it. You know, um, but that, that higher grit is going to give you a like a keener edge that's going to stay a little sharper for a little longer. Yeah. So it's kind of like that sort of. Consciousness. And then with those sides. So yeah, having a file is going to register well. You know, I'm disconcerted by the fact that you're videoing this right now. And this one's a little wonky. You can't actually see that closely, so don't worry. <laughs> Great. I know, but people are going to hear this file noise and be like, that file's not cutting well. <laughs> um, also, one thing that's really nice, sorry, it's just random. These relief cuts are in here so that you can run the file at an angle to the bit, mm. and you're not going to hit this, the top of this tube. Huh. You know? So you can run those like that, um, which is also nice. And it's the same thing with <coughs> four bits. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, don't keep going higher. You'll freak me up. You said the same number on each. That's why I was counting. I know, but you said one, two, three, four, five, and then you kept going. I do one, two, three, four, five, rotate. One, two, three, four, five, rotate. Oh, I one, see, two, three, yeah.
time in stone paddles. Yeah. I couldn't find my set this morning. <laughs> but it's basically like a diamond stone that's on a little plastic handle. Huh. They're super cheap and they're super freaking awesome. Um, Forstner bits, again, it's like the same situation, you know, I kind of touched on it briefly last week. But you know, you have this large face to pile and then this cutting edge. And sometimes I'll, I'll sharpen these teeth as well. Um, so that's I think the only difference with this is quite often you'll run into these where if you try and sharpen this whole face, uh, you'll find that someone else has sharpened just the edge um, and it can throw you off. To the right, so like there's the tip and then there's a relief on the on the side on the inside on the inside mm -hmm. after you've filed that away is the bun cutter done oh hopefully you're not ever filing that away you're not totally because I mean, aren't you filing the inside here if there's like that other bun cutter if there's a burr on there i'm filing away the burr Okay, I'm so you're not, you're not at, filing at the inside. I'm not I see. filing that inside face because if you're filing that inside face, I mean, you can if you're trying to manipulate the bung cutter to make a slightly larger bung. Yeah. <laughs> but right, as soon course. as you file that inside face, now you've gone from making, uh, you know, a three quarter inch right. bung to yeah. a bung that's a sixty fourth larger or a sixteenth larger, you know. So it can become this kind of like compounding error if you're continuing yeah. to file those inside faces. Like you don't... Don't touch the inside because you're changing the, the size of the bone. Yeah, you want to take the burr off and that's why I was saying it doesn't like... Yeah. You're, you're feeling that burr and you know, you're, I'll put a sharpie mark on the inside of there so I'm seeing where I'm taking the material off. Because I don't want to be changing the diameter of the bone cutter sure. most of the time. If you've used a countersink that's a whisker bigger, you know, and it's like your own bum cutter or whatever, yeah. then by all means modify as you see fit. Um, because you can change them yeah. to make a larger bum. Um, but, uh, but you have to know that that's what you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be like, shit, none of these bums fit. You know? yeah.
after some time and practice, it's not hard to like kind of see and sort it out for yourself. Um, but in the meantime, in the learning process, sometimes that Sharpie marking like really helps. It's like it's like anything, you know. You pick up a hand plane if it's not sharp, and you don't know what sharp is, and it's like, oh, it's, yeah. this is just a pain in the butt. But when you're using like sharp bits, you can, you can really, really change the quality of things that you're trying to create, and you're just using using tools that are sharp and good. So I have no problem with it, uh, but it is just like that's why I'm showing it. Yeah. Um, but uh, just to be cognizant of it. And if it's like really, really fucked up, yeah. and you try and use it, and it's like a nightmare, <laughs> then be like, hey, can you help me? Or whatever, yeah. you know, or try it again. But don't just like throw it back into the drawer. Yeah. That would be my only statement. <laughs> for somebody to pick up a bunk cutter and be like, that's a three quarter inch bunk cutter, and like, and it's like, and everything explodes. You know? and that's not so good. So, if it doesn't turn out well, then um, grab a human or figure it out, whatever your brothers are with it. Um, but, uh, Sometimes when I pick up one that has been sharpened so many times where the point is just like and like not concentric at all, then yep. yes. It's very hard to file this in such a manner that keeps it concentric with the rest of the bit. So I'm mostly just trying to stay the hell away from that. Yeah. Um, this is really just for like, you know, if you've got a center punched hole or something yeah. and, and you're like yeah. starting it. Um, it's not like the screw thread on an auger where it's going to, you know, be like drawing that bit through the wood and like really helping it track. Yeah, it's going to change that and affect it, but it's not like, whoa. You know. Are the keys supposed to be like level with the cutting edge or are they supposed to be like <coughs> color and help it track uh, where the hole's going? Um, Well, the, these side teeth, I mean, if you look at them right now, the tops of these side teeth, if you pass this around, the tops of these side teeth are like almost flat. They are not sharp at all. Um, they're pretty, pretty rough. Um, I mean, you've seen those spade bits, like, or like the flat bits that you use. That's basically what this is without the teeth. You know, when you think about it, like the cutting edge that's doing that work is the same. Um, it's or not the same, but not very different. When you have those teeth, that's like really helping that uh, hole run a little bit straighter because you have that sidewall depth and those teeth are cutting that cross grain in that tub. So that's like really where that difference is happening. Uh, some of those smaller Forstner bits, you know, you'll see
see that not as a tooth, but as a continuous straight edge, you know? Some of the larger ones, you'll see that as a tooth to help like clear and move material out. Um, so, yes, having those teeth on the sides be sharp is going to help make a cleaner cut. Um, they, they don't have to be, you know? Again, it's kind of like knowing what you're desiring from the thing and like where your parameters of quality are lying. You know, if you're like drilling a hole that's going to be like totally filled with epoxy or, you know, whatever, then it's like, who gives a crap, you know? If you're trying to make nice clean holes or like, I use Forstner bits quite often, you know, I'll put a piece of sandpaper on a block and use that to drill out bungs in faces that are gonna be like varnish, right? And instead of trying to pick bungs out with a scratch all. Why are you putting a piece of sandpaper? Wait, look at the sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, hold on, I'm gonna look at the sandpaper. Uh, like a piece of wood yeah. that I've uh, put a piece of 80 grit on one side of, and then I drill a hole through it with a Forstner bit that is the Forstner bit that I'll be using on the drill press. So that hole is 90 degrees. It's got sandpaper on the back. And I stick that block of wood right on the side of a, say, a cabin house. Mm -hmm. and, and then I line up the hole with yeah. the bung that's there. And the sandpaper just kind of helps the wood right. stay in one spot so I can press it there with my hand and that's got enough friction on it. Kind of the way you use like sandpaper on a wedge-shaped block with a clamp or anything like that. You know, it's the same idea, but now I'm just like holding it there with my hand pressure. And it's just enough to get me started with that force bit. And I'll drill out that bung. Yep. Instead of trying to use a scratch all and pick it out where a scratch all can like dent the side walls of a bung hole if you're not careful. Or a chisel. Um, just a little, a short awl that you can use for a variety of different things. Yeah, a little pointy thing. It's kind of like a, like an awl. Like an awl. I just didn't know the scratch part. Well, yeah, uh, a hard, slightly harder tip. You can use them for like, you know, scoring steel to mark steel to cut and everything else. So are you gonna sharpen these as well? Yeah, yeah, you can sharpen okay. those the same way you would sharpen for like, say, a, uh, a rip saw or something. Okay, so you're, you can, oh, you're like filing them, yeah, to give yourself a good clean cutting edge. Um, Is a force, or a force of it was made used in the same circumstances and the force of it's just better at it? Or a spade bit. I should have brought one down. Sorry. Uh, a spade bit is like a. Yeah, it looks like an orb. That's perfect. That's a good analogy. Um, but yeah, they kind of like. There's not a lot of mass in a spade bit, so it's, they will chatter a lot, and you know, because there's not a lot of bearing surface either, they have, you know they'll kind of like skip over the grain, and if you use them very much, you like, probably use. Load of construction. Yeah, it's more construction, more rougher. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's if you're make, trying to make a hole to, to kind of sink a bolt or nut or something, but it's not. Is that it's just like a, you're not gonna? It's like mass manufactured stainless right. steel Forstner bit version gotcha. for like quick and know. dirty. So they're about being inexpensive and kind of almost disposable. It's, they're cutting like fast too. Yeah, statements. Yeah, because they're just, I mean, there's nothing in the way of throwing chips out yeah, okay. and however much pressure you can put down on it, you know, you just like, um, and they have an amazing quantity of blowout, shoving them through a 2 by 6 um, But, uh, yeah, so they're not that different, but there's a lot more mass. You can get a lot cleaner hole with a, with a force member. 
Yeah, just I'll finish this side and then work on the cross cuts real quick. So Forcer bit is a stain bit with a hole saw. <laughs> <laughs> call a Forstner bit a Forstner bit, but yes, I see where that attempt at association is there. Um, so with these these sides, just as you're sharpening drill bits, and again, you know, also with bung cutters, just being con like con if you can try and envision in your head like where how that drill bit is cutting, you know, if I were to file this tooth so that it was at like, uh, you know, 90 degrees, like 90 degrees to the uh, center line of the bit. So let's say I'm like right there and we're imagining this is like center line. It's, it's perfectly, what's the geometric term that's radial. Um, if this, <laughs> if this cutting edge right here is running into the center, right? That's gonna be a 90 degree angle. Right. As like the wood is seeing that cutting edge. Mm -hmm. If I'm filing it this way, then that's just like pushing wood out of the way. It's not a cutting edge. If I'm filing it this way, then I'm making like, you know, a 45 degree cutting edge. Is this making sense or am I like totally yeah, yeah, losing you guys? But then, and on your point, I get it that it's so just to be cognizant of like how you're filing the cutting edges and the importance of that, like on a bung cutter, this is intended to be 90 degrees, right? Right. If you're changing that angle and wandering a little bit more this way, if anything, it's a little bit better to file them a little bit closer um, or a little bit past 90 degrees, right? Because now you've got like a crisp cutting edge and you're not, uh, you're not, Bringing that up. Um, I'm and, sorry, I'm kind of like know, fumbling with these words right now. Do you want it to be 90? These right now are are cut at 90. Okay. Because they're so small and it's so frig, you know, yeah. I can like kind of register this file over top of the pin in the center if the pin in the center is still centered, um, and I can file this at 90 degrees. If anything, though. I want to be just a little bit on the inside of 90. Small, make a smaller. Yeah, angle. make it a, yeah. a slightly smaller angle because it's not going to hurt anybody in the long run. The same thing with like this angle you know if I'm filing it like this it's gonna have a little bit harder time cutting and it's gonna want to push the wood out of its own way if I'm filing it a little bit like this it's gonna have that kind of like a the angle of a sawtooth you know it's it's gonna want to be like making a curl of wood you know making a shaving so like being just the only reason I'm saying this is just to be cognizant of like how you hold this file yep. and how you're filing is you're creating very, very small cutting edges and it's kind of a, a weird thing to wrap your brain around, but you're making these like very small cutting faces. And so just to be conscious of that, Sometimes files have teeth along the edges, mm. and then on other edges they have no teeth. If you look at this needle file, there's no teeth along this edge. You know, if you dig out some of the files in those drawers, you'll see variations. 
So if I've already filed mm -hmm. this face, and now I take the file and I go like this, the teeth are gonna be cutting into this face that I've just sharpened if I'm filing this flat face. But you can just use the face that's here and use that as kind of registration to get all the way into that corner and not be changing mm -hmm. the face that you've just filed. Um, so just kind of like <coughs> being able to do that. And what's the importance of sharpening that edge right there? Uh, I'm helping, so the, the, these, had, these points had these big flats on them, so I'm actually bringing that material down and making this very corner here crisp. So I can either file it in this way a whole bunch mm -hmm. or in this way a little bit and down a little bit. Okay. And because I filed these faces, right, that's like decreased the plane that these two cutting faces are on. So if I file these down similarly, everything's kind of like yeah. shrinking. Yeah. And these teeth aren't gonna hit before right. this edge does, or they're gonna maintain the same distance. So you're kind of like bringing everything down uh, in a similar fashion. Yep. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Um, see most of these points with the exception of the last one as compared to these points have a nice crisp corner yeah right you can oh, see yeah. the, the little flat that's on the yeah. top of the corner here where that's just like dull as shit with the exception of this point these have all come down and they're concentric and they're like you've got this yeah. nice crisp corner so that now is actually sharp and it's a cutting edge versus just kind of mushing things out of your way. Are you going to do that last corner or is there a chance? Um, I've filed uh, this this face here the same amount as all of these. Yep. So I'm actually just going to bring this face in more uh, so that all of the tops of these are still in line with one another. Yep. And I haven't like I don't have one tooth that's taller than all the rest, you know. Does that kind of make sense? Because they're all where they want to be in terms of this plane. So I'm just going to move it in this way. So, you know, again, it's that idea of like maintaining the symmetry and the planes that are all there. Um, have I frizzle fried your brains yet? <laughs> Seems like I might have to bring this edge in a lot. So I might just leave that one be a little bit dull. <coughs> what is it that you're looking at there? Just that very corner. See how there's still mm -hmm. that dull flat on that corner, whereas all of these mm -hmm. are nice and crisp and sharp. Yeah. So you'd have to bring this face in a lot more I'd than have, the rest of these? Yeah, I'd have to bring it in quite a ways. And you can't lower it because it's already at the same height right. as everything else. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm just kind of like, it's one tooth that's still a little bit dull in comparison to the rest of like these and what it was. Exponentially more sharp. Um, so. The other thing, again, with that whole idea of where you have teeth on a file, uh, I'm also, when I'm sharpening this, 
I have these teeth that are on this face down. So this in terms of like hand saw sharpening is the gullet, if I remember correctly. Is that right? Um, so I'm actually like continuing to make this notch or continuing to keep this notch the same depth by keeping these teeth here filing down as I'm filing these vertical faces, right? So that notch isn't becoming shallower and shallower. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or like that angle starting to change because I can't quite get into the corner with the toothless side. I don't know. So is that bottom tiny as thin as, is it actually filing when you're doing that, what you're yeah. doing right now? Yeah. Find your finger down. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. On it. yeah. So. I, I just, so it's resting on, so you're filing. So I'm filing down right. a little bit and yeah. in a little bit. That's what I was going to yeah. Again, all those have come down really nicely except for the very last one. <coughs> so be it. So that's these in a nutshell. And um, it takes a hell of a lot more time to explain it than it does to actually sharpen it. What'd you say? A, a very big nutshell. A very big nutshell, yes. A nutshell cram. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, or your brains have I overloaded you or do you want to talk about twist bits really briefly? <laughs> briefly. <laughs> no, this is, this was, uh, I, I mean, I'm still like, oh, maybe not this week, but okay. um, no, 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 about doing it because I oh. just think just doing it is, is yeah. No, it's weird. I think we have plenty of dull bits to practice on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like twist bits? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And also, are there any, uh, is there any one of these that we could practice on? Um, the enforcer bits? I think most of them. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty, pretty much anything upstairs. All of them except that one. <laughs> <laughs> or the set that is on my bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I will talk uh, a little bit about twist bits and hand sharpening twist bits and then using the jig to sharpen twist bits. Um, these are three examples of twist bits. The black one in the middle has already been sharpened by hand, so you can see that one's a little bit of a different angle, but you can pass those around. Um, the one, this black one here, if you look at that, you can see where the temper has been taken out of it, and the next, level or next thing that will happen after you've removed the temper from it is you will wind up taking <laughs> chunks out of the cutting edge like the one that's in Jonathan's left hand. Um, yeah, that's so that's kind of like the next thing that happens. The one that's in Jonathan's left hand, that's what you'll get uh, more so if you're cutting metals and you're not clearing the burr or you come down and there's an already existing burr in a hole and you're you're like winding that bit at a higher speed and it like all of a sudden catches that burr and it's just gonna like blow a chip right off that cutting edge. Yeah. That's, this one. Mm -hmm. That's the one with the big chunks out of it. And then to a much lower grade, this is like, you know, hitting a fastener in a piece of wood, catching the corner on it or something like that, you know? Um, 
So this is, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but when Tyler was talking about that countersink, where he had like seen that little flash of red yep. run around it, and we were drilling the stainless, and, and it was like, uh, like, you know, work hardened, and then it was like, yeah, you get that little, little like, of a burr being in there that's like, super hot. you know, not being able to keep the bits cool, or running them too hard, or not having enough cutting fluid on them, any of that stuff. Um, so the one that the tempers are, yeah. what's intended to try to retemper it? Uh, no, because that's just gone right on the very edge. Oh, okay, so, so just you can just, it just sharpen okay. it just to get rid of that. Okay. And, uh, and then you'll be back down to a good steel. It's not sharp at all. Right. You know, as. Oh, this is a great example, too, of things not to do with it. This is a, a Brad point bit that uh, <laughs> was tried, tried to use on steel. Uh, I showed you these, a couple so, of these. So no? I thought I did. That's it. Oh, that's cool. No, they're all, they're all... It, it just melted the bit? Is that what we're looking at? No, but just like, I guess. used to see, like when you what, have that swirl of a temper being gone, yeah. the edges yeah. are rounded it over, like or there's chunks just missing out of it. Pulling off. They just sheared it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has a big old... Oh, I see. Okay, the flute... The flute is, came off is, yeah. of the central stem. That's crazy. <laughs> this is the one that got like chewed up. And then this one's lost its temper around the edges. And the other one is just generally dull. Actually, that one lost its temper around the edges too. You can see like the color change. Chuck key is in the chuck. If you are trying to uh, rotate the chuck key, say I'm wanting to loosen this bit out of the chuck, I need to be rotating the chuck key like this, right? If I'm holding it and the lever is on this side, there's a little bit of slop sometimes in these holes. If the lever is on this side, as I'm pushing on this lever, it's wanting to push these teeth on the chuck key away from the teeth on the chuck. Right, if I'm pushing on it this way yep. and the holes are sloppy. If you change it so that the lever is this way and you're pulling the chuck key up, you're tightening the teeth of the chuck key into the chuck. It's the same thing as with the... Um uh, adjustable wrench, you go one way rather than the other way. Yeah. It pushes or, them close rather than pushes them open. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just that's a yeah. little thing of just being cognizant of like. Yeah. You're always pulling the teeth of the chuck key into the teeth of the chuck, and I always keep my fingers on the drill bit, closed, and on the chuck key because I'm wanting you know in a right. drill press I don't want this chuck key chuck to right. be spinning, and I also don't want the drill bit to fall out the bottom and smack the steel because I spent time sharpening it, you know? Um, so that's a, that's a drill bit that I sharpened a couple of days ago to give you a good sharp drill bit. So see, and you can feel those edges, you know, as compared to yeah. the one that didn't look that bad, but is not great. And if you feel the difference in those cutting edges, yeah. um, it doesn't take much, but there is a huge difference between a sharp drill bit and a not sharp drill bit. And with these, you're just sharpening 
this at the end? You're not sharpening down the flute? No. No, no. Oh, yeah. I don't have that technology or the mental capacity for sharpening large double so helixes. You, are you sharpening no, the... Thanks. <laughs> Sorry to be so silly, but are you sharpening here or here or there? Oh. Sharpie a face and mignon. Those are the cutting edges. Gotcha. Right? Yep. And then you have to make sure that they're not over. Not uh, Well, to, you do actually, you do want to have just what I've sharpened as the cutting edge. Yep. And the part in the back, you don't want to be hitting. You want to actually put a little bit of relief grind back there. Mm. This would be you can see that on there, like that face and that face. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like it yeah. rolls down a little bit. Um, so what I'm looking for in terms of sharpening is just to hit these faces, but I also want to make sure that I'm not the back of the drill bit, the heel of the drill bit. This edge is not going to be like riding in the hole. Yep. You know, it's kind of the same idea as like the teeth on the Forstner bit and all that stuff, like, you know, you need to have space for the cutting edge to be picking up material. Sorry, Daniel, can you show in this direction what faces, because your hand was covering the thing? <laughs> oh. um, so these sharpied edges, Yeah. you know, I want to be sharpening this as a cutting edge, and I want to be relieving this unsharpied bit here so that this is not riding in the bottom of the hole okay. before this cutting edge can make contact in the bottom of the hole. Yeah. So I will be grinding this whole face, but this is the cutting edge that I'm like really looking at. Um, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So it'll be like, this is my cutting edge here, that sharp piece it, but then this whole thing, because I don't want this to be hitting before this cutting edge can make contact. So I will be grinding this whole face, yeah. but uh, this is like what I'm, this is the cutting edge that I'm predominantly concerned with. So this is that cutting edge and starting to this is all getting ground back to this face. So there's two ways of doing that. Um, I'll run one in the jig first and show you that because it's really simple and quick. Um, Jig is really nice here. I'll just meaning you're gonna have a hard time going, you're gonna have to come yeah. back around and edit out. I'm gonna move seconds, back so this big. way. <laughs> um, this has a small uh, gauge that comes up from the bottom that is going to register against the flute of the drill bit. And then this back piece has a macro adjustment here, right? So I can allow for different length bits. And then a micro adjustment here, right? It also has a variety of different angles that I can choose. Um, so 
so this is for sure this is for sharpening counter sinks um, but eh, I've stayed away from that and I would not be able to tell you how to do that I haven't spent very much time with that um, but in terms of drill bits themselves uh, you know 59 degrees pretty common for like wood and things like that you can run them at a sharper angle and it's kind of like what I was talking about last week where you know wood is so much softer than steel that if you're thinking in terms of like a hand plane you can run the blade out a little bit further on soft wood because you're removing a ton of material really quickly the material is not that dense um, so you can move material remove material pretty quickly uh, as you start getting into harder and harder material you know you want to be altering those angles a little bit same way that you would with a hand plane blade so uh, the way that this is going to work um, is it's on a pivot, so it's just spinning past the flat side of the grinding wheel. Um, and in order to get everything aligned correctly, uh, the, all you have to do is extend the drill bit past this point half the diameter of the drill bit. So I don't know what the hell this is. This is a 7 16 so this would need to extend past this point here, 7 30 seconds of an inch. Um, so, This is a little, you know, it's on plywood. It's not like lag down, it's not great. So if I'm pressing here, I can alter that angle quite a bit, right? So I want to be like just with my finger pressure, running it from the back of the jig. So I'm just putting my finger on the back of the jig and rotating it past the wheel. And it's not any up or down pressure, it's just side to side. Again, um, keeping the faces even, same thing as plywood. I'm going to be counting the amount of times that I'm running it past the wheel, and I'm going to be trying to do that like consistently, you know, like moving at the same rate of speed through the wheel. When you bring it, uh, no, go for it. When you bring it, you can go like that, mm -hmm. but then you're going to bring it back, and that doesn't do something else. Huh? Okay, makes it just, just super stoked, super happy. symmetrical. I've taken a fair bit of material off, but you can see that corner still has some monster chunks missing out of it. So I'll flip it to the other side, do the other side, and then uh, move the jig, move the jig just a whisker closer to the wheel and do another round. Yeah. I don't have to worry about over TV. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of like, you know, sharpening lathe tools or something along those lines. Um, you know, if you feel it, it's not crazy hot right now. I'm not lingering on the wheel. Uh, when you're pressing something into the wheel really hard, you're going to be generating a lot more friction and a lot more heat. And yeah, you will start overheating it. 
if I need to take a lot of material off, then I'll just grab a couple of other bits and just like sharpen one some, set it down, sharpen another one, set it down, sharpen another one, set it down, and then go back to the first one, now that that one's cool, and take more material off of it. So I'll just kind of like try and like stack stuff up so it's just like I have something else to do and I'm not rushing into the cooling process. Otherwise I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the wheel?